with today, um, it's a, this is actually our second meeting that we've kind of had, which is rather unusual. As you can gather, we are a community centre. This community centre was sat, lay dormant for about four years, uh, and it's now used regularly, predominantly by young people. Not that you're not young, uh, but it's used by young people in the community. But actually, this is our second meeting since this. We were the host of the very first ever cabinet on tour. That was done by Galway City Council. Uh, and uh, that was uh, really successful. I think they had as many people in that meeting as they've ever had in other cabinet meetings. Uh, and uh, it's great to have you with us. Let me tell you a little bit about enthusiasm. Um, I've got a little few pictures because I know it's early morning. It kind of stimulates the kind of mind. Um, enthusiasm began 20 odd years ago. I arrived in Derby. Uh, you can probably gather by my accent. I'm not originally from Derby. Uh, I'm actually uh, from, I, I grew up in Manchester slash Naples. Another thing today is St. Joseph's Day. Did you know that? <laughs> it is Saint it's a very special day. It's kind of like a birthday in Italy. So if you want to give me presents after, I'm going to ruin it after that. I arrived in Derby. Uh, my background, uh, first generation immigrant, uh, grew up in Manchester, moved to Italy for several years, came back to the UK. I struggled through school. I really, really struggled. I achieved very little in terms of my education. At the age of 30, uh, I was diagnosed with severe dyslexia. However, I managed to succeed, and I succeeded because I had these two protective factors in my life called a mum and a dad. I moved to this estate, and I was looking out my front room window one evening. Uh, I, I know climbing up a lamppost with two kids, climbing up onto a factory roof, nicking lead. I go out as a good citizen, I said, what are you doing? We're nicking lead. Why are you doing that? We're bored. And I turned to this kid right at the top of the roof, pulling the, the lead from under the slates. I said, what would your dad say to you right now? He says, my dad's got another 10 years of jail to serve before he says anything to me. And I was shocked at that moment. So I was inspired to set something up, to do something. Uh, and so we set up Enthusiasm. It was me, a group of local young people. Interestingly, one of our very first ever funders was actually Community Fund, uh, Derbyshire Community Foundation. So it was me, a bunch of local residents, passionate about making a difference in young people's lives. And we're here today. We now operate across three different cities. Uh, we work uh, across Derby, we work in Nottingham and Manchester, and we've also recently started to do some work in um, Erewash, Cotmanay and Kirk Hallam uh, over in Derbyshire. And what we do, we're successful. And we're successful in turning young people's lives around. I'll throw, throw out some quick statistics to you. Uh, 90, we see 94% of the young people who've come through our system uh, who were once deemed to be high risk are no longer high risk. And we reduce their risk of criminality, their risk of uh, becoming excluded, their risk of need by at least 50%. Uh, we currently work across all three cities with about four to 5,000 young people. However, we work with probably about 150 young people who are deemed those most at risk in society. So we're a very successful organisation. Why are we successful? It's all about the P's. So we we'll remember this, I and mean, you next have your peas, chips and peas. You don't do peas of anything, Derby, do they? Mushy peas? Yeah, no. Anyway, next time you have peas, you'll remember this. It's all about the peas. Why is enthusiasm successful and what do we do? Personal relationships. Anybody remember this film? It's uh, Karate Kid, Mr. Miyagi, and it's all about those personal relationships. And what is really key to young people? And, the, and what we're going to use our fund regarding future talent is about developing personal relationships. And a little bit later, there's a couple of gentlemen at the back with green t-shirts, they'll tell you a little bit more about that. So why Enthusiasm is successful is we deliver a number of projects. However, the key indicator for us is not projects, but it's about personal relationships. It's about bringing young people face to face with somebody who believes in them. And over the period of our lifespan, 20 years or so, thousands upon thousands of young people have been brought face to face with people who believe in them. <coughs> this is, uh, it's, uh, I'm going to read you a little story. This is uh, a little Italian guy. I'm allowed to do this because I'm Italian. Um, just read you a little story. You might have heard this before. Um, it's a little old Italian man. This is a story called the Italian Tomato Garden. Has anybody heard this story before? Good. Um, let me just read to you a little story. The old Ital there was an old Italian gentleman who lived alone in New Jersey. He wanted to plant his annual tomato garden, but it was very difficult work, as the ground was hard. His son, his only son, 
Vincenzo, or you may call him Vincent, um, who used to help him, was in prison. Oh. The old man wrote a letter to his son and described his predicament. He said, Dear Vinny, or if you want to put an Italian accent, Caro Vincenzo, I'm feeling pretty sad because it looks like I won't be able to uh, plant my tomato garden this year. I'm just getting too old to be digging up the garden plot. I know if you were here, my troubles would be over. I know you would be happy to dig the plot for me. Like in the old days. Love, Papa. Or Caro Papa. Uh, a few days later, he received a letter from his son. Dear Papa, don't dig up the garden. That's where the bodies are buried. <laughs> Love, Vinny. <laughs> 4 a.m. the next morning, the FBI agents, local police arrived and dug up an entire area without finding any bodies. They apologised to the old man and left that same day. The old man received another letter from his son. Dear Papa, go ahead, plant the tomatoes now. That was the best I could do under the circumstances. <laughs> Love, Vinny. <laughs> we are pragmatic. We're a pragmatical organisation. So this is where all the peace. And it's about reaching out to young people. Uh, probably about two years ago, I was sat in a, an event, fantastic event, with April Hayhurst at the back there. And it was a, uh, an event where organisations were getting awards for doing things in the community. And it was wonderful. And I said to April, I said, wouldn't it be great if we could grab some young people from some of the most deprived estates in Derby? Because tonight, just so you know, on this estate, there were children who will go to bed with no food in their tummies. That is a reality. There are kids who will turn up here, and they'll probably turn up just before you leave, who wouldn't have eaten, they might have had a bottle of coke for their breakfast. That's the scenario and the situation. It's fantastic to hear that Derby is doing so well in terms of how it develops. But we have big, serious issues, and it's about being pragmatic and reaching those things. Two years ago, we set up a, an innovative programme, working with Derby College, uh, and particularly April, but we wanted to reach to gang members. We had an issue with gangs. There were lots of shootings taking place that you guys may not be aware of. That has the potential of having an impact on what happens in terms of the business of Derby. And uh, we worked very closely with Derby College and a number of other partners, and we were pragmatic. We got a number of these gang guys who we did a risk assessment, health and safety, we couldn't take them to the college because that just wouldn't have been appropriate. What we actually did is we trained people up in this very arena, in this building. People who, were, at the age of 15, were arrested for carrying loaded guns. A uh, stone's throw away from here. So it's about being pragmatic. It's about reaching the needs of the community and the young people. That's why. It's there. And the final one is we're about prevention. We're about preventing young people from entering the system. Does anybody know how much it costs to keep a young person locked up for a year? Anybody got any idea? Um, I'm conscious of time, so I'll, I'll hurry up, and Helen's nodding her head to say, to say hurry up. It costs approximately £230,000 per year to keep one young person in jail for a year. Statistics show that two out of every three kids who are locked up will continue there, that life cycle of going back to jail. So two hundred and thirty grand a year 